Hello learners, I'm teacher Rigan. Uh, welcome to Easy Limu Learning Simplified. So in our today's lesson, we are going to discuss place value. So I believe this is not our first time or your first time to talk about place value. So uh, place value, maybe just to start off, place value by definition. So in our introduction, in our introduction, we are going to briefly define what place value means. So place value, place value simply refers, refers to the position, to the position occupied, occupied by a single digit, a single digit in a number. So in other words, when we talk of place value, we are referring to the position. Refers, sorry, to the position that a single digit occupies in a number. For example, if you have the number, say 256, and someone asks you to state the place value of any digit here, then you are going to give a mathematical position of a number a position that that particular number occupies in this number. For example, in our previous classes, uh, that is grade six, you will discuss the place value of numbers from ones up to hundreds of thousands. So in grade seven, we are going to go all the way up to hundreds of millions. So maybe to just start with what you know before we go to what you do not know, let us state the place value of the first digit learners will help us. Good, so the first value of the first digit here is ones. The second digit is five, it place value is tens, and the third digit which is two, its place value is hundreds. So this is basically what we discussed in our previous classes. So at this juncture, I want us to discuss the two methods that we can use to solve the questions on the place value of digits and also going all the way to hundreds of millions. For example, for example, if you have a number like 123,967,403. Nine hundred, so here we have two methods of solving the place value. We can use the method of abacus. This is where we use symbols or oval like symbols to represent the numbers per place value. Sorry. Or we can use uh, the normal tabulated place value formula that we have been using in our previous classes. So solution, solution, method one, Method one, we are using abacus. Abacus is something like this. So one abacus represents one. So if I want to represent this number, I will draw one abacus to represent one. If there are two, I'll draw two of them on a vertical line. So if I have this number, if I have this number, I can have my number written here. Um, somewhere here, 123,967,403. So then you have it enclosed in a table like this. Then you partition. Then on top of each number, you draw vertical lines. So here, we, the first thing we are going to do is to learn how to represent the each digit here using abacus. So I, like I said, this is our abacus. That's how an abacus looks like. So if it is one, you just draw a single abacus. So here we shall have one. Here we shall have two of them. Here we shall have three of them. 
Here we shall have nine of them. Here we shall have six. Here we shall have seven. Here we shall have four. Here we shall have no. This, this is digit zero, so you don't represent it in any other cast. Here we shall have three. So once you have this number, we have represented the same number using abacus. So down here, you shall produce slanting spaces for the place values. So we'll start with the first one. What's the place value of digit three? Yes, Victor. Yeah, the place value of digit three is ones. So you write ones. The plus value of digit zero, Kevin, that is tens. The place value of digit four, yes, that is hundreds. So depending on the space you have, you are actually allowed to use the initials to denote the place value of a number. For example, if you are at a juncture whereby you have to write hundreds of thousands and the space provided cannot accommodate the whole statement, you can use the symbols to denote that very information. So the place value of digit, the next digit, which is seven, is thousands. So we have thousands. The place value of the next, Irene, yeah, that is tens of thousands. So in this case, the space I have cannot accommodate tens of thousands. So you'll allow me to use capital T to denote tens, then I write thousands. Then we have here hundreds of thousands. Allow me to use uppercase H to denote hundreds, then I'll have thousands. Then the place value of the next digit after hundreds of thousands. Yes, George? Yeah, good. We have millions. Then the last, the next one is two. Yes, that is tens of millions. So allow me to use capital T to denote tens. Then here we have millions. Then here we shall have the place value of the last digits, which is hundreds of millions. So that is solving place value of numbers using the first method, which is abacus. So in most cases in exams, you'll meet the same thing, but in that case, you'll, they'll do away with these numbers. They'll do away with the following numbers. The teacher decides to do away with the following numbers. Then the question asks you, to write the number represented by the abacus below and accompany them with the respective place values. So all you need to appreciate is that a single oval that is horizontal represents a digit. So if it is one abacus, that means one. Two abacuses means two. So one, two, three, nine, seven. This is six, sorry. Six, seven, four, zero three so appreciate that so let us answer the same question now using the usual way of doing the place value as you discussed in your previous class so we'll just rewrite our number which is 123 million 967,403. So here we can use the column method. We can have the number written vertically. Then in the second column, we stipulate the place values. Or we can alternatively draw vertical lines pointing at each and every digit. And at the bottom, we indicate the place values. So allow me, because of time, to use the first method whereby we are going to drop vertical lines or arrows pointing downwards, then below them we indicate the place value of each digit. So at this juncture, we already know the place value of each digit, so we are just going to drop the arrows. So here, our first arrow, the place value of the first digit is ones. 
second digit is place value is tens which is zero we have hundreds we have thousands tens of thousands we have hundreds of thousands are we together good we have after hundreds of thousands we have millions after millions yes celestine good we have tens of millions tens allow me to use capital t to denote that tens of millions then the last digit here is one with a place value of hundreds of millions maybe we have someone who is so curious and you are wondering what could be the place value of the next digit after one who can help us with that in as much as we are not discussing it in this class but it's also very important that you know the order in which the counting goes so after the next digit which is one what could be the next place value class good billions billions so if you had a digit there say x then its place value will be billions but at this juncture we are only going to stop at hundreds of millions so any question any question okay i'll assume that your silence means that uh, we are good so maybe to just give you a few questions to check whether you have conceptualized our session today maybe a few questions for you to try and if you encounter any challenge you can ask for assistance so maybe solve the place value of each digit in the numbers below in the numbers below so roman 1 we have Roman 2, we have 147, 147 million, 503,000. Then maybe Roman 3, we have 100 million. So attempt those ones and uh, check whether you have understood the concept of place value of numbers up to hundreds of millions. So in our next session, I will check on that, then we'll discuss uh, the total value of numbers of up to hundreds of millions.